Hey, it's Tom from Texas and it's time for another floppy deep dive. And today we are going to be diving into another edition of What's on that floppy? And we are going to be looking at, uh, I'd say, six or seven games here on this floppy. Going to go through them one by one like I always do. Checking them out exactly like they are on my floppy. Showing them to you guys and sharing the memories of playing the game and the fun it was playing these awesome games. Or could be terrible games, whatever it turns out to be. But checking them all out, trying to remember them, seeing if you guys remember it, and just bringing back some great, great memories. So I'm going to have a little contest for my subscribers because I thought it would just be fun to give something away. And I thought it would be really cool, but a little bit something that I call Win Tom's Retro Commodore 64 Poster Contest. Yeah! 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 These three posters that are hanging up on my wall, you can pick one of those if you're the winner and I will ship it to you. I will ship anywhere in the world, not the frame, it's just the poster itself, but I will ship that poster to you anywhere in the world and we're going to play a little game and hopefully you guys enjoy this and have fun. So in this game, in the next eight videos that I make, I want to say a keyword that you'll have to just write down. That's all there is to it. So if the next video I say clock and I say the keyword in this video is clock, all you got to do is write down the word clock. And keep track of each one of those keywords in each of the eight videos. And then at the end of the contest, after the eight videos, all you have to do is email to me at p1tom at yahoo.com the eight keywords that you collected and you'll be put in the drawing and then I'm going to draw a name in a video and whoever name I draw you're the winner and you get to select if you want Bruce Lee, Maniac Mansion, or the Pirates poster. It's completely up to you. So I thought that would be fun. Just want to give back to my community and thought this would be a fun way to do it. Um, please do not put the keywords down in the comments. If you put the keywords down in the co comments, that disqualifies you for the contest. Also, no, I'm not going to put any video clues or anything. you got to listen to the words, and it could be anywhere in the video, at the very beginning, at the very end, in the middle, anywhere. I could say the keyword for this week is clocks, or whatever the case might be. And that way you will know that's what you need to write down. Again, don't put anything down in the comments because, you know, that's not really fair. I want people to actually take the time, listen to the videos, find the keyword, and then keep track of them. And then after that eighth video, all you got to do is send me all eight keywords to p1tom at yahoo.com. Again, you'll be put in a drawing. I'm going to draw a name out, and whoever's name I draw anywhere in the world, I'm going to ship you one of the posters, and you get to pick one of these three. So hope that's exciting you guys. I hope that's something you might want. So if you want the poster right off of my wall, that's all you have to do is keep up with the keywords, write down all eight, send it to me in the email, and I'll ship it out to you if you win or not. Again, this is not sponsored by YouTube or anybody. This is just me having fun with my subscribers. Even if you're not a subscriber, you can play along, keep track, email me. That's okay too. But again, no, there's no going to be something where you can kind of just scroll through the video looking where I pop up a big keyword. No, you got to listen to it. You got to listen to where I said the keyword for this week or the keyword for this video is blah. And I'll make it very clear. I'll say it just like that so it's easy and there's no confusion. So in the next eight videos, starting with this one, keep track of all the keywords. Don't put them down in the comments. Keep track of them, and at the end, you'll send it to me. I know I've said these rules over and over again, but I want to make sure that it's very self-explanatory and that we all understand exactly how this new contest is going to work. And hopefully it's going to be fun, and hopefully someone wins one of these posters and they're excited about it and they want to win it. So feel free to watch the videos as many times as you want, trying to find the keyword. Again, you do not have to subscribe. You don't have to like. All you have to do, real simple, just find and listen listen for the keyword, write them all down. There'll be eight of them all together. Don't put them in comments. Send it to P1Tom. The P is in Paul, the number one, T 
tom at yahoo.com and I'll put it up here on the screen so you see exactly where you got to send it and if your number is drawn when I put you all in a hat and draw the name out and I'll do it in a video too so you can see it just why I do it and we will give away one of these three posters to you whichever one you want it and I'll ship it directly to your house no charge so I hope this is fun and good luck on winning one of these three classic retro posters. So let's go ahead, pull up a chair, grab a joystick, and let's get started. So first we're gonna look at BC's Quest for Tires, and this is a video game that was released by Sierra Online in 1983, and it was released on a lot of different systems. Uh, this one we're looking at is the Commodore 64, but it also was released on the Atari, the ColecoVision, the ZX Spectrum, the MSX, and the Apple II. And this would be another cool one to do the mini faces of, just to see what the different versions look like. And I might do that eventually, but today I'm just focusing it on what's on this floppy and what's on this Commodore 64 version and this one here is basic on the comic strip uh, BC and basically you take the role of the caveman Thor who's trying to rescue his girlfriend and was kidnapped by the dinosaur and to do this you got to travel on this stone unicycle uh, through a bunch of different levels and you gotta avoid the different dangers. And I really enjoyed this game from the beginning. Uh, this one, I thought the graphics when I first saw it was really cool. It looked like the comic strip. You could tell it was BC. Uh, coming, one of the first games that I played on my Commodore was the BC's Quest for Tires. So it was very cool to see it on this floppy. And basically what you do is you go through these different levels. You got to jump over potholes and duck under tree branches. And you got to hop across different turtles to cross a lake and different things to uh, makes it a little bit harder when you're getting carried over a lava pit by the by a bird and so forth. So it was just really fun and it wasn't that hard. So you could just pick up the joystick and start playing. And then it's that kind of game. And I think a lot of people played this game and enjoyed it. I know it had great reaction on all the different systems and won awards back when it came. So it was just really, really fun to have this on this floppy and play it again. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments about BC's Quest for Tires and when you first played it. It's one of those ones when you put it out there, everybody has some kind of experience with it one way or another. Um, and if you did it, you need to go get it and check it out and download it because it's definitely worth playing. Um, if you're a fan of the comic strip BC, it's definitely worth playing. Now, of course, there's a sequel that comes out and we'll look at that game whenever it pops up on a floppy called Grog's Revenge, which was released the next year in 1984 but this is the original the first one that came out by Sierra lots of fun I give it two thumbs up and if you haven't played it do it so let's go ahead and move on to the next game so next we're going to look at a game called Guzzler and Guzzler came out in 1984 and it was basically a Pac-Man type clone game where you control this mouse in a maze who has to eat this fruit that's stored in different lock sections of the maze. So what you do is you go around and you collect keys to unlock these different doors and then you gotta go eat the different fruit in there. But while you're eating the fruit you get fat. And so you, you certain spots of the maze that are thin you can't fit through there anymore. So you gotta either get touched by that thing going around the outside and it'll shrink you down one level or you eventually will get down to small again and it was just really cool this game because at first I don't recall this game I, I don't remember playing it as a kid uh, today I, I was just trying to figure it out and I didn't realize I was getting fat and that's why I couldn't move around so it took me a little bit to figure out oh I got to get skinny again to get through this again so whether I actually played this for quite a bit and I and enjoyed it I thought this was a fun game and I can't believe I missed this one I had it in my collection but I never really played it that much but it is definitely one that's worth checking out. Uh, it has the normal like Commodore 64 ragtime theme music at the beginning, but it does have an excellent rendition of Nobody Does It Better on the high score screen. So 
did a good job with the, the gameplay, did a good job with the music. I liked the concept of it. It was just, like I said, a very, very cool game. Uh, going in there, basically you have to collect the different fruits to get to the next levels. But and definitely enjoyed it, and this would be one that I would go back to and play it again. And if you never played Guzzler before, I'd recommend getting this one too and playing it because it's definitely worth the play. Uh, I'm not sure if it's on Retro Pie or not. I have to look and see if it's out there for people who do emulation and so forth. But if you have a Commodore 64, I recommend getting the D64 file or getting the original of this game and playing it because Guzzler is one that's definitely worth checking out. Um, there's not a lot out there on it uh, on the website, so I don't think it was really that popular a game. I could be wrong, uh, but basically it's not the one of those typical games that everyone talked about. Now there is some sort of arcade version out there, and again, I've never played the arcade version, but I hear it's different. I hear that it's not the same thing that you're doing here, and I might have to go check that out and see if that's out there on my uh, arcade games. But this one here, if you've never played Guzzler, go look it up. It's worth the play, it's fun, and again, another two thumbs up. Glad that I got to play Guzzler. So next we're going to look at a game called Drink and Drown. And Drink and Drown was, was an interesting but fun game back when I was 14 years old when this came out in 1986. And it's all basically text and they put you in different situations and you got to make decisions all the while drinking. So at 14, it was a game about drinking as much as you can and getting wasted and trying to impress chicks at the bar. And so you never got to experience that in real life as a 14 year old. So it was cool to have something that seemed a little bit naughty to be able to play on the Commodore 64 and it definitely has and I didn't put any of this in here the cussing and a different selection because they always ask you if you want to swear and then they give you this huge list of swear words that you could actually go in there and select and do a different uh, do different things but I am not going to add that on this list. If you want to check it out, you definitely can. But I remember I definitely did play this as a kid back in 1986. And it's just basically a nightlife simulator in that you're trying to impress the, your friends and the ladies while you're trying to conserve money so you could continue to drink alcohol. And you don't want to drink so much because eventually you could throw up on your shoes or even black out. And you basically go from bar to bar encountering these different uh, circumstances that they throw at you. And then you get a decision, multiple choice, usually about three choices that you could pick from. And then they'll grade you on based on what you pick. And then you also get graded by what kind of drink that you're drinking and if you can come up with some swear words or something that are, are put together, they also grade you on that. So everything's graded off your situation of what you're doing. And I don't know where the drowning comes into play in all this. Maybe you just drown your sorrows and all the drinking. But this game was definitely, what for a 14-year-old, yeah. Now, meh, not so much. I uh, found it kind of boring, and I would give it thumbs down. But if you like these kind of games or simulator games, or you played it when you were a kid and you just want to relive it to remember it, it's definitely uh, for adults and maybe you would enjoy it. So next we're going to check out a game called Yo-Yo and it's all in Spanish but when it came to gameplay that didn't really matter because you could figure out what you have and you look at like this wrestling caveman looking guy and you carry a yo-yo and you can hit these pink monsters with your yo-yo and you have to jump from platform to platform and collect different diamonds and these balloons come floating up through the air and if one of those balloons hits you it'll kill you and so you got to make sure that you go on stand these platforms when you jump you don't want to jump up there's where a balloon can get you and you say HCC I don't know what that means but 
basically that's what the whole game is is climbing up these ladders uh, going to these different levels and killing these different monsters and jumping from platform to platform while you're collecting different stuff mm -hmm. like the diamonds and trying to avoid the balloons and everything mm -hmm. else and that's basically yo-yo in a nutshell again the, the, it came obviously it looks like from Spain because um, everything is in Spanish it, it's basically just a, an arcade scrolling screen and I believe this came out in 1986-ish also uh, you could play with music or you could play with the music shut off uh, so it did have different options for you if you wanted to and I believe you could do different difficulty levels too and select those difficult uh, different difficulty levels that you want to play um, all the while like I said avoiding these I thought the monsters looked pretty cool that little pink thing with teeth um, looked pretty cool to me and I thought the main character looked pretty cool the concept was actually pretty good and the graphics actually looked pretty good I played this for a little bit but I just couldn't really get into it um, I don't know maybe maybe if I played it a little bit more I would I would give it a C out of all these games but definitely uniqueness it I rated high on uniqueness uh, I like the whole uh, Sigmin and the sea monster type looking monsters and uh, if you haven't checked this one out and you just want to try something different or you're looking for games that starts with Y this is called yo-yo so check it out so next we're going to look at a game called aqua racer and this is a waterborne version on pole position which is basically your speed boats instead of cars in a lake in place of a racetrack and so you gotta have to guide your boat and apparently there's 20 courses i didn't even qualify any time that i played on the first course but you got to qualify first in the first round and then you set your time uh, that you got to beat and then once you beat that time then you get to go further and then race against different cars. I didn't like the controls of this game. It was hard to stay on course. Uh, it really could improve on that. Uh, they could best basically hard to tell where the course was for the road so it wasn't really clear when you're going to get off of course uh, where that would be and so you'd crash because you'd get off course or you'd be disqualified because you go out of line of the cr of the course or and and like i say with the boats they made it so sensitive so you're just basically going all over the place and it just really was to me not fun um, I, it might be a clone of pole position, but it's no pole position. Pole position's awesome, and I can play that. It has a really good feel to it and steer to it. Where this one, definitely, you're just all over the place. And, and, the, and, I, and from what I read, the courses add variety, but they're pretty similar. They just get thinner and more twisting, so it makes it harder. But it, you know, and it has an average reviews out there on the different ones that I looked at. Uh, I'm just going off of my own personal opinion of playing this, that it just wasn't my cup of tea. I didn't like it. Like I said, I couldn't control the race boat very well. I kept getting off course, kept crashing into other boats, and maybe that's just my skill level. But it just did not want to really work with me. I kind of like the cannon fire at the start of the race that kind of starts it and gets you going. Uh, you basically you have two gears in this and in the top speed that you can go is 110 uh, you accelerate by pushing the joystick forward and and you can slow down by pulling back and then the fire button actually changes the gears between low and high and so if you like these kind of games or if you're into racing games this might be one for you uh, like I said instead of cars it's speed boats so it is a little different and maybe something I'd be interested in if anyone ever played this one or if they've had any experience playing this one but overall I again give this one a C not my favorite game in the world and I would 
probably never play it again unless I need to review it again for some reason, which I don't know why now that it's out on the video. I don't know why I would come back to this, but this isn't one that I would continue to keep coming back to because if I wanted to play pole position, I would just load up and play pole position. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So next we're going to be looking at something called power. And it also goes by critical mass over there in England. That's what they call it. But here in the U.S. we called it power. And this game is interesting. So once again, it's a mission that you're on to save the universe and all everyone's life and everything. And basically alien forces have captured an antimatter conversion plant which supplies power to colonists in a distant planetary system. And the aliens are threatening to turn the antimatter planet in, onto self-destruct and wipe out everything. So that's where we're at. And now, so you start off and you're this little car and it kind of looks like if you ever had a big track back in the 80s when you were a kid, but this shoot them up is Basically, you're trying to shoot those green little things flying around and avoid the rocks while you do it. Um, overall, this little shoot 'em up the, the thing is, it's just kind of dull. I did kind of like the part where I get a jet pack and I kind of get to flying around and I finally notice that these arrows down there tell me which way I should go. And I don't know what this worm thing is that's popping up out of the ground trying to get me every time I take a break. If you notice that worm thing popping up. So the jetpack's actually kind of cool. A little bit hard to maneuver. Wasn't the best controls on this. I think the graphics wise they did a really good job on it. And this could have been you know a better game. But it's just the problem. It's just got dull. Um, there's not a lot to do. Even when shooting those green flying things that were going by. They just not a lot of them and they just occasionally go and so it was kind of hard to, to to even get to them to shoot them um again i would give it thumbs up on the graphics gameplay i would just give it average um i'm not sure why they called it different things uh here in the states versus over there in england but Overall, I didn't play this at all when I was a kid. I don't remember it at all anyway, so it wasn't like a, it was a go-to game for me. But it was interesting to check out. Like I said, I enjoyed flying around on the jetpack. If anyone did play this game and, and knows more about it or is excited about it, you know, put it down in the comments. would love to hear your thoughts about it. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So the last game we're going to be looking at is Crackout. And Crack Out is the kind of game that I like. Uh, Crack Out's like Arkanoid or a Breakout clone. And the goal is to go through the different levels and hit the ball with your little bat off to the side and hit it against all these different blocks. And of course things change during this time and you get different powers and different things can uh, kill you. But it's each level is unique. And it's just fun to play. It's an easy one to pick up, grab the joystick, and it's pretty easy to figure out what you're going to do. You might not know what all the power-ups do or exactly how they all work, but they're pretty easy to figure out. And that's what I liked about it. Um, this came out in 1987, I believe. And these games, there, there were so many different versions of this type of game, but... Like I said, I was attracted to these. I did play them quite a bit when I was a kid. These would be go-tos just when you wanted something quick to play and you can go in there and start playing. So I really did enjoy doing this one. I give this one a huge two thumbs up. It's, it's just fun. Um, like I said, it takes me back to my Pong days of playing Pong when that first originally came out and having that system and before we even got our Atari 2600, we had our Pong system. And so this kind of reminds me of the Pong, but of course this is just like the Breakout and then the Super Breakout and the different ones that are out there. But fun game, worth checking out. If you've never played this version of Crackout 3, it's definitely one to go out and get that D64 file if you don't have it. Or if you have the original disc, load it up and play it. 
or if you even have the cracked version to go out there and load that up and play it because it's definitely worth it fun game wanted to end on a fun one and this definitely was a fun one to do it so did you like crack out games were they fun please put all your comments down in the bottom anything that you thought about any of these games love to hear about it and i wanted to say the key word for this week number one for the contest the key word is clock so just like you heard in the beginning in the example the key word now is clock so write down that word keep track of them in the next seven videos there'll be seven more words to collect and you could win one of my retro posters so the word is clock for this week so write that down and don't put that down in comments so let's go ahead and get this thing all wrapped up so that's it guys that's all the games on here of course the most popular one on here is that bc's quest for tires i love that game it was one of the first games that i ever played on my commodore 64 and thought the graphics were really really good back in the day when you first saw it and thought it was really good compared to my atari experience and playing it here now on my Commodore 64, just loving how the graphics looked. Loved the gameplay. It was good enough or easy enough where I could play it and get pretty far and feel good about it when I was playing it. So just love this one. So BC Quest for Tires was my favorite. Of course, the other games were all fun too. Just checking them out. The good, the bad, the ugly, right? So until next time, thank you for joining me on another Floppy Deep Dive.